for being here. Uh, I will be talking about integrating Erlang with PHP, but in this talk it's not about like compilation from one lang language to another. It's to use PHP where you want to use it and to use uh, Erlang, pure Erlang when, where you want to use Erlang. So uh, a little intro introduction about me. I am the lead developer at thenetcircle.com, which is a company based in Shanghai, in China. I'm not Chinese, as you can tell, I guess. And I'm from Uruguay, in South America. So we're, this is the South American room today, I guess. And there's my blog, and then I, I'm the core developer of the PHP Erlang Bridge, which is a C extension to connect PHP to uh, Erlang. The extension work also was uh, done by, by another Chinese guy from Beijing. He started the first work and then I took it over and added more features to the, to the extension. And then there's my Twitter. If you want to unfollow me, just look for that name and remove it from your list. So, PHP in five minutes. Uh, I gave this talk uh, last week in Berlin, but it was in a PHP conference, so I had basically to explain to PHP guys w what uh, Erlang is. Now I, I, I assume maybe some of you guys know about PHP, some, some of you don't. So I, I would like to give a, um, a brief introduction to PHP and also from there try to find out why you would like to do this integration with, with Erlang. So, PHP stands for PHP Hypertext preprocessor before when it just began was like personal home page that was the first meaning of that word then it was like a, a recursive acronym that it would never reach the hypertext preprocessor I guess I don't know and then it works embedded into HTML so PHP is a language basically for the web and the cool thing about PHP is like you have a text file so whatever is not between the PHP tags, it will be output to the browser. So it's, it's really, really easy to get some uh, HTML page with, with some dynamic content uh, I mean, up, up and running. You just write a, a file, you, you add a .php uh, extension at the end, then you have all your HTML code, and when you want to have something dynamic, then you, you open the PHP uh, tag, you have your PHP code, you close it, and then it all will be sent to the, to the browser. Of course, you can use PHP in, in the command line or to make application and stuff, but the uh, big usage is for, for web pages. Then, of, of course, PHP is an interpreted language. It works on top of C. There is a, a send engine that, that uh, replaces the first engine that, that PHP uses. So this one added object ring capabilities and more performance and stuff to the PHP core. So once you write in PHP, then that code will be interpreted, will be converted to opcodes, and then from there we'll run in this uh, virtual machine. That uh, is all in just uh, plain C code. So then uh, it supports procedural or procedural uh, programming styles. So the OOP ones, the more pure, to give it a word, were, was added in the PHP 5 version, and PHP 4 was kind of, kind of a mix of, of stuff. So like in the 5 version, you, you can have a visibility of operators, I mean of methods or variables inside your classes before everything was uh, public. So you resorted to naming conventions instead of the uh, feature provided by the language, for example. Then, as you may know, PHP is used by Facebook, Yahoo, Wikipedia, and much more. Uh, so it's, it's quite battle tested out there. It's not like it's just a random language. I guess you all know that. And as the guy said yesterday in the talk about Erlang and compilation from, from to PHP, uh, it's really easy to deploy, you find hosting everywhere, so if you want to have something like, like up and running now, you can use PHP and, and it will just work. Then, of course, like for a company, it's easier to find PHP developers, so uh, any language could be 
pretty cool to work with and, and interesting, but uh, if you don't have developers to work in your project, then there is not so much advantage in how cool the language is. So in that case, PHP, the, en the entry barrier is very low, so you can have all kinds of developers, but you can find uh, some. Today, the trend in PHP is adding all the QA stuff into the language or with libraries, so uh, they're improving the unit testing libraries and, and all this kind of, of, of stuff. If there is even a new company for, for QA in PHP. And there are tons of libraries and open source projects, so you want to create a web page, you have many frameworks to choose from, you, you can connect to, I don't know, to MySQL, to Memcache, to whatever you see out there you have it in, in PHP most of the time. And if something is quite hard to do it in the language, then you can add a new, uh, you can write your own C extension and then add that to the, to the language. But w what are the, the problems with, with PHP? It's not every, everything like cool in, in, in here, right? So the first problem we have seen is uh, PHP is stateless. So if you, uh, whatever you do in PHP after the next request will be gone. So for example, you loaded the user and the password and the host to connect to your database from a configuration file. Let's say you parse a YAML or a XML file. This parsing ne needs to be done again for the next request. Of course, you can add some smart stuff and do caching, etc. but it, everything is, is reloaded all the time in the default uh, way of running PHP. So, if you want to scale PHP, like uh, we run a, one of the top dating sites for Germany and we have a lot of users and, and a lot of uh, requests uh, per minute, so you can't just go and, and say, okay, I build it in this, in this way, I build a hello world, the same stuff I did will work for, for a big site or stuff like that. I guess you may have read or, or know about the problem that Facebook face or uh, any other big site running in PHP. So the extra tools that you can use to, to scale PHP is like one came now by default in the distribution, it's called APC, which is an advanced uh, PHP cache, I think is the name. Advanced process cache, sorry. So what, what can you do is here, first, uh, if you just enable this extension, your source code, the compilation or the translation to, uh, to opcodes will be cached. So uh, that step will be avoided in the stateless part of PHP. So if you don't have APC, every time the interpreter needs to compile your code and then run it. If you have APC enabled, then uh, you can uh, skip that uh, step. And of course, with, with APC, they added a feature to store in the memory of the process some variables. So if you load some configuration from like a database, like I said before, you can store that in the memory of the process and then uh, you don't need to load and load that again. Uh, so the thing is, with the bare PHP, you cannot just go. You need to start adding or learning new technologies. Then, for example, you have Memcache. You, you want to uh, distribute your sessions from, from your website, then, or you need to use um, MySQL, or you, you have to use Memcache, or you have to use something to distribute your sessions. You can share, uh, like, in the default way provided by PHP. So, again, you resort to an external system to, to, to scale your site, for example. And then, MySQL is there for every single problem. You need to have a counter in PHP to know, I don't know, how many times your page was viewed. Then the, the solution everybody seeks is like, okay, let's add a table and, and drop that into MySQL. Which, considering what it, how the web is going today and all the, this no SQL databases and stuff, I, I, it's like today is bringing more problems than, than solutions, I believe, to put everything into into a MySQL database, for example. We had several problems with, with uh, this approach. And there, there is no inter-process communication, like what you can do in Erlang, that you can just send messages ac across processes. In PHP, this is simple. I mean, of course it's possible if you start to do hacks and, and stuff with, with Linux, but not directly uh, 
into the language. Every, every PHP process that is serving a request is just uh, 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 handling that. Once it's finished, it, it, uh, everything is gone. And another thing that like, there is no, in PHP, uh, there are events. So, for example, when we work with the ANQP library for RabbitMQ, we would like that when you receive a, a message from, from Rabbit, you fire a, an event and you call that function. In PHP, that's not possible. Everything will run in sequentially. So, you need to have like a while loop, like uh, all said before, and then be waiting there to see if something was written into the channel, and then from there you will call the function based on what you got. So it's like a fake event, but it's not like, like what we see in Ella, as far as I know. So, all this, this thing, I believe you can, uh, you can have them in, in Ella, like the P Ella will be running constantly, so you, your state will be kept there. Once you load the configuration, you have it in memory, you don't need to process that again. If you want to distribute sessions, for example, you can use Nisha or any other means to to do that kind of stuff. You, you have uh, databases like React where you, you don't need to transform your data to another format or, or Nisha also. So you can kind of solve all this, uh, this stuff. Of course, for the Yellen developer, this is like what? I mean, it's like it's there since you install Erlang. And when I talked last time in, in Berlin to the PHP guys and I, and I told them, yeah, with Erlang you don't need to shut down your system to upgrade uh, your code. In PHP you just press F5 and you have your, your new code there. So the advantage is that the, I remember I, I read when I was uh, learning Erlang, like you don't need to, to shut down the system to have your new code. I mean, for me, it was like, so uh, in, 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 Erlang, in, sorry, in PHP, you just write your new code, press F5, and you have it there. If you use it APC, based on the configuration, maybe you have to clear the cache, but that's it. So about the uh, agile stuff in PHP to have new stuff on is, is very, very fast. OK, regarding these problems, I believe that we can solve them using Erlang and integrating with uh, PHP. So how do we <coughs> accomplish that? The, there is the, this extension that, that converts Erlang into a C node and is using the C library provided with the Erlang distribution called the Erlang interface. So uh, basically what, what this extension does is exporting into the PHP uh, function namespace uh, the Erlang interface function. So, is, uh, for example, in, in Erlang you have uh, send by PID. Here you have uh, PHP send by PID. Um, and basically it's, it's just that. So, what can we build using this extension? For example, some stuff we have done is like uh, admins for, for Erlang systems. So, in our company, all our developers are PHP developers. So, for, for us to to build like an administration console for RabbitMQ in PHP is just a matter of hours or, I mean, it's, it's really nothing. And then we can give this uh, raw HTML code to a designer or for him to go there and modify and, and get like a uh, nice look is, is, is what he do the whole time. If we have to do this using Erlang, we will need to, to teach everybody how to use Erlang to show what templating system we are using and stuff. Of course, everything can be learned, but if we want a very basic administration console for RabbitMQ, we don't want to spend the whole budget just to build something very simple to, to see what's going on in Rabbit, for example. Then, as I said before, we can build session storage system for PHP, like a very uh, ad hoc a key value store like using the X module or the DEX module for example if you want to have a counter and know how many pages have been visited there is no need to create a table on, on, on MySQL and, and have running a whole MySQL system when you just run a, a, an Erlang um, console and from there you communicate and you have it, you can store your stuff in, in an ETS table for example then like run MapReduce jobs in Erlang uh, 
I mentioned that because you may need to process something and have it like processing it over a long time. And before version 5.2 in PHP, sorry, before version 5.3, from 5.2 to the previous ones, in PHP there is not so, so good uh, garbage collection. So if you have a for loop and then you're instantiating objects inside, your memory will start to grow, grow, grow un until the PHP just crashes. So you can't just do like long time processing with PHP or you need to take care that your memory is not, I mean, going, going up. In the new version, in the 5.3 version, we've seen like 40% of performance improvement in PHP, mostly related to the new garbage collector. So with the new ones, are, uh, it's, it's very, very cool. But before was quite like a uh, hackish way if you want to do something in, in that requires long time of processing. Then besides that, in PHP, most of the time it's configured to run for a short period of time. So an Apache process, for example, will kill your PHP if it takes more than 50 seconds, 60 seconds, or, or whatever you configure it. Of course, you can change the script to say, uh, to run in, to, in an unlimited period of time, but then I don't know if a, if a share hosting will allow you to do that, or I don't know, it depends where you're running your application. And of course, we can do much more stuff. So as an example, this is the RabbitMQ administration console we wrote for, for Rabbit. So we can list the virtual host, we can list the users in the system, the connection channels, uh, see the permission of the V host, um, and many more stuff. Then by using this uh, library, I also wrote a very, very basic uh, niche uh, like uh, similar to the PHP Miami tool that you have in PHP. So you could list all the tables in a Misha, in a running Misha application. You can, uh, I believe, create new tables and stuff. The problem is like from PHP, you can create a closure, an L1 closure. So there is no way to run a Misha transaction from PHP. But if you have a wrapper in L1, you could uh, interface directly to, to Misha, for example. Here, this is what, what is what it's doing. So, to see some code of, of how this works in the background, this is uh, um, PHP code. So, if it's of course an extract of a class. So, if you want to get a connection and you don't have the link already in the, as a member of, of of this class, then you will call the PAD connect PHP Ellen Bridge connect and you pass the host and the cookie of, of your Erlang uh, node, and with that you should get a link. Uh, there is also a possibility to do persistent connections, but here we have a problem with uh, the way PHP works, where you, uh, you, I mean, you can answer the Erlang tick, which is a message that uh, the Erlang, Erlang sends between nodes to see if, if they are still alive, so, after a minute or whatever you configure the Erlang port mapper, uh, it will be uh, pinging your, your, your C node, in this case the PHP node, to see if it's still alive. And because in PHP there is no way to, to have events and, and reply to, to them, you cannot actually have, in this case, a, a persistent connection. If some of you know how to achieve that with, with uh, PHP, then I'm glad to, to, to hear the solution. The, the basic problem is you need to receive the messages and reply to them. Of course, you can have a while loop uh, and trying to get to receive those ticks, but in PHP, you don't, usually you don't have like a while through, do something the whole time. You just process a request and then send something out to the user. So that's how we get the connection. And then if we want to send like a message to, to Erlang, if, I don't know if you are familiar with the RabbitMQ um, source, but in Rabbit you can have the, the Rabbit Exchange uh, module and the list will list all these changes on the broker. The same with list bindings, you can list the bindings in these changes in, for the broker. So in PHP, what you do is just to get a, a message to send, like encode there will be a binary, and then you pass the virtual host that you want to encode as a binary in Erlang, and then you just call which module, which function, and passing the message. So to have this abstraction, m mostly because uh, Erlang APIs 
I, I really, really clean for what I, I, I have seen so far. It's really easy to, to just, if you know the documentation of, sorry, if you know the code of the, of the module you want to call, you should know which parameter to send, the name of the module, and the, and the function you want to call. I mean, I believe it's really, really easy to, to do this interaction between PHP and, and Ella. So, what is this call method doing? It's just doing an RPC call to the module function arguments and using the connection or the link you had before. And then it's returning uh, whatever else and sent back to, to the C node. It, it will decode it and, and convert it to PHP data types. But basically what you do is you encode your message and then you will, you, you will use uh, the RPC function to, to send it to a module function and using the arguments. And I believe if you know Erlang, it's the same when you do an RPC call. So it's very, very like straightforward from one language to, to the other. And then another example is about session storage. And the wise we already talked about like to, to ease the, the distribution of the session uh, data. So as I said, now we are using we are using main cache, but in main cache, what we have is, is stored there. It's just a serialized uh, version of the session information. It's how PHP works. So it's just a string, and you cannot do anything with that string besides retrieving it back, and then the PHP runtime will load it as a, as, a, as a proper session. And from there, you can see in PHP if the user is authenticated, if the user has the proper credential or whatnot. But what we want to do, for example, is when a user reaches the homepage of our, of our site, what is happening right now, the, the Nginx will, load, will send the request to the FPM, the PHP FPM will load the whole framework, and then from there we'll retrieve the session from Mencache, then it will see if the user is authenticated or not. Based on that, we'll redirect the user to the login page or to the normal one. We could do that directly on Nginx. For example, if we write, if we store the, the session information in uh, in, a, in Erlang, like in Nisha or I don't know, uh, I mean, in some kind of storage, we could uh, uh, write a server that answers those questions, like, is this user authenticated? Is this user having the proper credentials to see this page and stuff like that? And if we can do all this stuff, we avoid loading the, the whole PHP stack from, from all the requests to the home page to the site, for example. We can improve the caching mechanism we have in the user profiles and, and several stuff just by doing the routing directly on the Nginx by querying the, the Erlang backend and not uh, loading PHP just to know if the user must be redirected to a different page. So. And then the cool thing about Erlang is that you have several storage backends that you can choose. Like you, you can do a very simple ETS, or you can go to Nisha, or you can use uh, React or or Bcat, for example. That I I wrote just as a proof of concept. I wrote a wrapper around Bcat called PHP Cast, which is just a, a library to use Bcat as a storage for uh, PHP. So as you know, uh, Bcat was uh, developed by Basho for, as a React backend, which has been presented yesterday. The API is very, very, very minimalistic, like you have put, get, delete, and it's just maybe five or six functions, I don't remember exactly, but it's really, really simple. So then the data is stored on this. So another problem we have with main cache, if something happened in those machines, all the user sessions are gone. So, here we could resort to restore the information back. And uh, they say that because it's just a file in, 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 in a folder, you can just back up that really, really easy if you want using Bcast. You can read more about there in the, in the link. So how you do to do session storage into Bcast? PHP allows to customize the session set handler, as, as session set set handler there. So, Basically, PHP is wait or expects that you have some interface where you say how you, you want to save your session. 
So you need to implement an open, close, read, write, destroy, and garbage collect functions. And then what I do there is I, I import or require the PHP cast session handler. I uh, instantiate the object of course giving the host and the online cookie where I want to connect to. And then uh, I say like, from that uh, instance, you say open method, etc. And then after all that, you, you call session start. If you don't do that, then PHP will store it in whatever you have configured. Could be the file system, could be MySQL, or I don't know. So doing the, adding this code to your page, you will have uh, the storage sent to, to Erlang. So the session handler, for example, to close, we just close the connection to PHP cast or to BitCast. Uh, to get to read a session based on the session ID, which basically most of the time is what you have in the as the cookie ID. We will try to get the data from from Bitcast, and if it's found, we we'll return data. Else, we we'll return an empty string, which is what the interface uh, expects from from a custom session handler. Then, to write, you have the session ID and the session data, and this is using PHP cast just puts in the, in the storage and returning true if the result is, uh, is okay. So the bitcast client in PHP, is, uh, this is of course uh, part of the code, it's not the whole code. It's just encoding data, like uh, uh, the binary for the key and the binary for the, the value, and then doing an RPC call to the PHP cast module to the put uh, method, and then returning whatever Erlang sent back to the, <coughs> to the staff. Of course, you can add better exception handling and, and error management here, or in the Erlang part. So then the, the wrapper for, for the Bitcast API is a simple Erlang module that has the get, put, delete, etc. And you may ask or wonder why there should be a wrapper for Bitcast when you just call, call, call directly uh, Bitcast. The thing here is that to call Bitcast in the API you need like the Bitcast uh, PID plus the parameters you want to send. And the, in the PHP extension you can handle PIDs, but for the next request, because a PID will be a resource, it will be gone. So there is no way to keep PIDs from one request to the other. And I believe it's too expensive to call an airline process to say, okay, give me the PID of Bitcast, and then I will send the messages there. So instead of doing that, I just call this uh, wrapper uh, around the, the Bitcast uh, API. Of course, all this stuff needs to be really benchmarked and, and proved to see if, if it's a really good replacement for, for main cache. Because, because uh, it's just cool to do it, doesn't mean you have to do it. So at this stage, we, are, we, are, we, we have the proof of concept and we want to know if it's possible to replace a uh, main cache, for example, using this stuff. In the case of the Rabbit and MQ administration console, that because uh, nobody will cry if this is stopped working, uh, we have it running in production with our Rabbit MQ servers and also in our lab. And the reason why we did it is like before, if you want to query all the RabbitMQ, you need to go to the command line and then submit some commands to the RabbitMQ CTL. And that was kind of cumbersome for all the developers because they need a way to change themselves into the RabbitMQ user. And then like it was a lot of typing um, and a lot of questions every day to me. Hey, Alvaro, this queue, queue is working or is having messages inside or not, I don't know. So for that simple use case, we, we decided in using the, the extension and, and everything. In this, in this another example, I will be more uh, careful if could be or not put into production. And then the key value store I, I mentioned before, it's like you can use the ETS tables, you can adapt the API to suit your needs, so you, you can have a really, really basic module in, in Erlang just to, to say what you want to store and to have it there. And you, you don't need to learn a new database or, or deploy a new database or something. You just have the Erlang distribution and it should work for you. 
And as it's the easiest way, I believe, to with a uh, web counter, you don't need to have all this SQL stuff running in, in behind. I did some tests here. The, the code is on GitHub, and I think in the extension uh, homepage you can see the links. Uh, I could insert 150,000 objects in per minute using just an ETS table and the, uh, this library. My goal was mostly to see how fast was the encoding from PHP to the Erlang data types and from there send it to, to the Erlang process. So I'm quite happy with the result, but I, I'm, again, it's just really some vanilla code to see how much this can handle per, per minute. And of course, I, I batch the inserts and stuff, it's not like one after the other. I just send like, uh, let's say, uh, 5,000 uh, objects converted into Erlang and then sent send to the Erlang process. Then, how to get the extension running? You can download the code from, from the link uh, down there. So after you get the code in PHP, you have a tool like you just run this PHP ice and then it will find in the system, in your Linux distribution for example, or in the Mac, where you have all the PHP libraries so and build the configuration script, etc. So once you have that, uh, you run the configure, you run make and you run make uh, install, and that should get you going with the extension. Of course, you can have some problem based on where you have the 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 Erlang distribution installed, but that could be easily solved by passing some arguments to the make. Uh, I mean, before the configure, for example. So. Once you have the extension installed, you, want, you may want to know how to do actually do something. So the hello Erlang, really simple example. You will run your server using a short name, hello, for example, and the cookie demo. <coughs> and then you have this uh, receive loop here. So it's just to say, to print what the user sent, or if you send quick, just uh, return OK and close the, this process. And if you receive any, any message, just uh, put whatever it got. So, once you have this code running there, in PHP, what you will do first, you will connect to, to, to Erlang. As you see there, we use the name of the node, hello, plus the host, and demo is a cookie. If you can connect, you just all put a message. And then, the, to send a, an actual message, it will be encoded and then it will be sent by name to the, to the process. Then the, the message is received, the message is decoded into PHP, and you can print it or do whatever you want. And of course, at the end, close the, the connection. So a description of all this stuff will be like, the connect uh, function is, uh, has its interface, interface, host and cookie. The send by name or send by PID you have the node, the message, and the link. So in the case of the PID, the node will be the PID, and in the first one will be just a name. Uh, then if you want to encode messages, because in the Erlang interface, you can encode messages in two ways. Based if you are sending like an RPC call, or if you do a send by name or send by PID. Uh, then you can use vencode or, or the normal encode. If there is a better way to do that, I would really ask, uh, uh, get, um, I'm willing to get the help to, to how to improve this part of the, of the interface. And then when you want to encode a message, some examples, for example, if you want to get an atom in, in Erlang, you just pass the, the, the format string plus the, the string you want to encode. If you want to encode a double, you do the second example. Then to encode a list, you will have the, the element of the list here. And the same for the tuple. Why there is an array here? It's because as, at the moment, the interface for encoding is not working like printf or sprintf is working. It w what I would like to have is to have a vari variable number of arguments. So instead of having an array of the element you want to encode, I would like to have just a variable number of arguments, like we are used to work with printf or sprintf or whatever. So at this time, this part is quite ugly in the, in the current uh, interface of the extension, but it's what we have. So 
the format string you can it's really like what you are used from Erlang. So the list, <coughs> the tuple, you can have an atom, strings, <coughs> binaries, integers, and doubles. And the PID. So using these formatting uh, uh, characters you, you can get the the encoding <coughs> of the PHP data types. So to receive a message, you just call PAB receive on the link, and this will take care of if it's an L and tick, it will <coughs> else it will get the message and and store it as a resource. So once you have this resource in PHP, you will decode it, and depending if you you got the message from an RPC call or from a send by PAB or send by by name, you will use decode or B decode. You can see all this stuff in the examples that the extension has when to use which one. Then, to decode the message, the strings, atom, or, or binaries in Erlang will, will just be converted into strings in PHP. The tuple or the list will be converted into arrays. And for example, if you send a record as a, as a response, as a reply, because the record in, in Erlang is just an atom, it will be for the extension would be just like you receive a, a top. There may be a way to hint that to the PHP interpreter, but so far I'm just doing the, the straight conversion into PHP data types. Then the PIDs are converted to resource in PHP. The integer is just an integer and the float uh, just a float. So then how to do an RPC call? We saw this before. You can have PID if the RPC, if the first one, it will wait for a uh, reply from Merlin, and the second one, the RPC2, it just don't wait for a reply. So it will just send the, the message and don't wait for anything. So basically all that is uh, what the extension is doing right now. The, at the end I will show the links, but there is a website with, with documentation, with some examples. And of course if you can submit some issues there and, and give feedback, it will be really uh, appreciated because yeah, I believe it's a way to grow in an open source project. And, and yeah, this, this is basically what, what you can accomplish. You, you can have your uh, Erlang code running as you usually do in Erlang. And if you want to have a, some sort of integration from PHP, you will run PHP as you usually run PHP plus the extension, and then you will do the link between them. But uh, for the PHP developer, it will be just PHP. For the Erlang developer, it will be just plain uh, Erlang. There is no sort of com uh, conversion or, or something new you have to learn. It's just each language it stays uh, uh, as it is with the advantage it, it has and the, and the shortcomings, both from the Erlang side or, or the PHP side. So as a to-do list, um, I would like to have a simple API for encoding or decoding messages. A, a cleaner uh, extension installation procedure for, for several platforms. So far I, I have tested it in Linux, in Ubuntu, and in, in the Mac. But I don't know if it compiles on Windows, for example, and stuff like that. And then do much more testing and benchmark to know if this can actually be run in production in a in a site where you have a tons of requests per per minute or per hour or whatever. So, and then something cool to have in the future, for my point of view, is like to have PHP for the front end where you will do templating, which PHP excels at. It, it was made for templating. So, if you have an MVC framework, for example, you can do the the view and the controller part all in PHP, and then just provide Erlang API for, for the backend to do ZB access, cache, session storage, and more. And why, why to, I would like to have this. In my experience working, uh, when you do all the, the access to the database or to main cache or to whatever from a PHP application, most PHP developers are, are not used to the to the requirement that, that a big PHP site has because most of the time you just work with a CMS or I don't know, some maybe simple site or like the guy say yesterday in the PHP talk with not so many requests uh, at the time. So 
then how do we use main cache? It start to get complex. How to, to avoid hitting the database? It start to get complex. How to cache variables in APC? It start to also get complex. When do we clear the cache? And I don't know, several uh, problems start to pop out. Of course, the, those problems will still be in Erlang. It's not like they will disappear because you use Erlang. But uh, I believe you can control that much, much uh, better than if you just do it. Uh, everything from PHP. If this works or it doesn't work, I don't know. It must be tested in the future. We hope to, to deploy something with, with that. Then, resources. This is the last slide, so if you're hungry, you will be ready to run soon. Uh, the PHP Erlang uh, page is, is uh, in, in Google as a Google project. Uh, then the other links are mostly for the PHP guys in the previous conference, like where's Erlang site, a book to learn some Erlang, uh, the community site and the conferences. So, sorry if I was too fast. <laughs> I believe it's my Spanish-induced English. But uh, if you have any questions, it's just ask. One? Yeah. There is a project based on the Erlang PHP model Sounds like the same thing, but from is a different project or is the same, but we're missing. I'm Erlang PHP module, I don't know. If you type, if you Google for Erlang in PHP, it comes to this extension that's essentially in that. I think I I I think one, but I I don't know if it's the. There are like four projects to integrate Erlang and PHP. The one, the first one I saw, uh, is from a university and. And I believe it's not, uh, it's, they are not working, it's not active anymore. Then the guy from Last FM, they wrote some stuff to, like from Erlang, serialize the, the code to, to PHP, the, the way of the PHP serialized variables, and then like communicate that, but it's kind of a hack in, in, in like in, in Erlang you, you execute a command, that command is PHP with some arguments, and then whatever the PHP echoes is what this guy deserialized in Ella. Then there is another project in GitHub for doing communication, but he's writing all this library in, in PHP. It's just plain PHP, so I believe that that would be really slow. And I don't know some, I mean, other, I don't know how this would work. That project, as far as I know, is using your same approach. I mean, I know about it, uh, but uh, this Sutterman, I don't know exactly which one is of those I mentioned, if it is one of those. And I Google a lot about to see if there is something new to learn from or to solve the, per the persistent connection problems and stuff. And I haven't seen something like it. In this case, it's just a C extension for uh, PHP. Any questions? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I can see the point of using like PHP because you say, okay, I, I need to build a website. I don't have Erlang developers in my company. I have uh, all my CMS that is wonderful and I want to use that. And did you think about like using other solutions like you know, IDL, like Drift, for example? I mean, I know that like Drift is not the best. Solution. Yeah, I know about Thrift. And um, when we tried Thrift like two, one year and something and a half, to build Thrift, and uh, we tried to build to build some other product from Facebook that were using Thrift. It was a pain, and we had very good C developers in the company that they they know how to handle all these library dependencies, everything, and it was really hard. So, was if huh? which sense was hard? I mean, to to resolve all the dependencies and to get all that running. Then the Thrift uh, code at that time was incomplete for the PHP part. So we, uh, basically what they advertised as an uh, example, they were not running. So we discarded. Maybe today is much better, I don't know. But we didn't look into it after. Questions? If not, uh, thank you very much. Um, yeah, thank you.